the physical embodiment of what capitalism looks like in the movie industry and how great marketing actually matters more than the quality of the product. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Michael Jordan once said. And I feel like Nicolas Cage used that quote and he applied it to his movie career because this guy has been in over 86 movies in a starring role. And 18 of them have made over $100 million at the box office and he has arguably the greatest run of action films in the history of movies. From 1995 to 2000, he did Leaving Las Vegas, The Rock, Con Air, 8mm, Face Off, Snake Eyes, Gone in 60 Seconds, all in a row. The very definition of comedy royalty, Ben Stiller, he has so many classics, movies like Zoolander, don't even help him on this list because they weren't box office hits. He has three bona fide film franchises in Madagascar, Night at the Museum, and Meet the Parents. Add to it, hits like There's Something About Mary, Along Came Polly, Starsky and Hutch, Dodgeball, Tropic Thunder, this guy is an absolute beast, a fantastic actor and an incredibly underrated director and he's number 24 on my list, most box office revenue by an actor in the history of movies. Being Doctor Strange in the Marvel Cinematic Universe will most definitely get you on this list, but my favorite work by Benedict Cumberbatch came in the imitation game and on television in Sherlock Holmes. Add to the resume, hits like The Grinch, a Madagascar movie, what you have is a top tier talent as an actor who also so happens to be a movie star. Imagine how much higher Adam Sandler could have been on this list had he not signed that deal with Netflix over a decade ago. I'm not knocking it. I think it was a super smart decision, especially with the way original comedies started trending at the box office. But this guy has 20 movies that did over $100 million at the box office, and he's only had one since 2015. That was Transylvania 3. This guy has such a stacked resume. Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore are his 26th and 27th best performing movies at the box office during his career. Is Jim Carrey's run of comedies from 1994 to 1998 the greatest in the history of movies? This guy did Ace Ventura followed by The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, Batman Forever, and Ace Ventura sequel, The Cable Guy, Liar Liar, and The Truman Show all in a row. All of them were financial successes despite their flaws, and over half of them are comedy classics. This guy once demanded $20 million per movie for good reason. Jim Carrey, what an absolute beast. Bruce Willis is the very definition of a movie star. This guy oozed a nonchalant coolness that just can't be taught. And before he started taking on B-level action films for paydays, this guy had 21 movies at the box office that did over $100 million. His best performing movie ever was the utterly fantastic classic The Sixth Sense. Add in two more M. Night movies, plus the Die Hard franchise, plus the popcorn flick Armageddon. Bruce Willis, number 20 on my list. Jeremy Renner's performance as Jem in the Town is one of my favorite performances of the last 20 years. It's right behind Heath Ledger's Joker for me. And this guy, after the Hurt Locker, it felt like Hollywood decided they were going to make him into a movie star and give him every coveted lead role in town. And truthfully, I don't like it when Jeremy Renner does the Bourne Legacy, Mission Impossible, or The Avengers. I like it when he shows off his acting chops in things like The Town, Wind River, American Hustle, and even the criminally underrated movie, Tag. Nice guys don't finish last, and Matt Damon is living proof of that notion. This guy is wicked smart and an absolute student of his craft. What he did in The Martian is one of the most underrated performances of this century. Plus, he is a box office star with the Bourne franchise, the Oceans franchise, plus add on fantastic films like Saving Private Ryan, The Departed, Goodwill Hunting. You not only have an incredible actor, you have a bankable star at the box office as well. Don Cheadle has a sneaky, awesome resume, and obviously Iron Man, Captain America, The Avengers, 
the Oceans franchise is why he's on this list. And despite a shaky accent in the Oceans trilogy, this guy is a fantastic actor who's been in incredible films from Flight to Crash to Boogie Nights. And as a proud Minnesotan, it is pretty awesome to know that he cut his teeth on the stage of the Guthrie Theater before becoming a film and television star. I find Mark Ruffalo to be a bit annoying, I'm not going to lie, but this list is about the numbers and not my personal opinions, and I respect anyone who worked their way from being a bartender to a movie star like he did. And he's obviously on this list because he was the Hulk in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but now you see me in its sequel. Those were both hits, but my favorite Mark Ruffalo performances and movies are the underrated Zodiac and Spotlight. The physical embodiment of what capitalism looks like in the movie industry and how great marketing actually matters more than the quality of the product, The Rock. He's had 23 movies to over $100 million at the box office, and frankly, I thought he would be much higher on this list, but this is about revenues, and since most of his budgets are really high, the dividends are not as great, therefore he's number 15, which, not too bad. This might piss off The Rock, but coming in one spot ahead of him is his arch rival and nemesis, Dom Toretto, a.k.a. Vin Diesel, who I'm not sure is still a movie star because I don't think he can open an original film outside of the Fast franchise. But then again, he really doesn't need to find out because that franchise is so bankable and he's done 10 of them. So why don't you just keep doing stories about family, me familia, and making a shit ton of money like Vin Diesel has? I would really like to see Tom Holland open a movie outside of the Spider-Man universe, and I think he can do it. He's a really good actor. He's like a musician with a lot of early hits, and how he redefines himself is ultimately going to define his legacy. And I hope he doesn't choose the Mark Wahlberg career path and instead looks at somebody like Robert Pattinson and tries to duplicate what he has done with his career. After smacking the shit out of Chris Rock, we might be talking about Will Smith as a movie star and ability to open a film in the past tense, which is wild because in the 90s, this guy was Mr. Summer Blockbuster from 1995 to 1999. Bad Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black, Enemy of the State, and Wild Wild West in five consecutive summers. He has 20 films that have done over $100 million at the box office and one film, Disney's live action remake of Aladdin that joined the billionaire Boys Club. Eddie Murphy and Chris Tucker are the two actors that I absolutely love in everything that they do. I just wish we saw more of them. This guy was a star in the 1980s. He hopped onto the scene on SNL at the age of 19. He was a movie star by 21 after his first film, 48 Hours, was a hit. This guy did raw, R-rated comedies, and he transitioned to more family-friendly films because that's where the money was at, as evidenced by the Shrek franchise and The Nutty Professor. Go along with his comedies like Beverly Hills Cop and Coming to America. Long before his ex-wife shit in his bed and aired out his dirty laundry for the world to see, Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow was one of the most oddly charming lead characters the film industry had ever seen. Plus great work with Tim Burton and the highly successful Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, throw in a movie from the Harry Potter universe. It is no wonder why this guy is number 10, most revenue at the box office in the history of cinema for an actor. If you would have told me 10 years ago that the fat guy from Parks and Recreation would generate the ninth most revenue at the box office in the history of cinema, all in less than a decade, I'd have made you take a drug test. But personally speaking, I thought the Jurassic World movies all sucked, especially number two and number three. But hey, they made bank at the box office, so my opinion, it doesn't matter. But add in the Guardians of the Galaxy and one of the most charismatic leads in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, a few great animated films in the Lego movie, and Super Mario Bros., and I guess it pays to get into shape like Chris Pratt did. Kind of like a great athlete who sometimes looks like the greatest player ever to play the game and then on other nights doesn't even look like he belongs on the floor. That's Chris Hemsworth acting because this guy, when he's good, he's really good. Thor Ragnarok, Extraction, Rush, all incredible movies, all incredible performances. But then you got Ghostbusters, Men in Black, 
Bad times at the El Royale. They are all dreadful. Chris Hemsworth, he reminds me a lot of Burt Lancaster. Has some really big films and a lot of duds, but not for one second has anyone ever questioned whether this guy is a movie star or not. The greatest movie star ever to exist, and frankly, it's not even close. This guy lives and breathes making movies. He has a beautiful obsession just like Tom Brady did with football. He has 28 movies that have done over $100 million at the box office. And most A-list movie stars, they have about a 10-year run. Tom Cruise is coming up on a 40-year run, and he's only getting better with age. His most profitable film, Top Gun Maverick, was just released last year, and it did over $1.5 billion at the box office. That's his first billion dollar movie ever. This kind of feels like cheating. The guy is Captain America for Christ's sake. He has starred in seven Marvel movies. He helped create the brand into its multi-billion dollar universe that it is now. But I'm not interested in Chris Evans as Captain America. I'm interested in what he does after he hangs up his shield because Chris Evans, the bad guy in Knives Out and Gray Man, that was super awesome. Please, Chris, more of that and less of movies like Ghosted. Harrison Ford is 100% your dad's favorite movie star. This guy was Han Solo and in Indiana Jones. If you don't like Harrison Ford, something might be wrong with you. And low key, one of my favorite Harrison Ford performances, Hollywood Homicide. And I think The Fugitive is the most underrated movie of the 90s. That and Air Force One. Get off my plane. Shout out to Gary Oldman. He's fucking awesome in that film. Is Bradley Cooper quietly putting together one of the most impressive movie star resumes in the history of cinema? This guy is the Warren Beatty of his generation, but not even Warren was this bankable at the box office. And low key, A Star is Born is one of my guilty pleasure films and his follow-up, Maestro, is my most anticipated film of 2023 up there with Oppenheimer and The Killers of the Flower Moon. And Hangover, that's a Mount Rushmore comedy for you. He was in all of those and he should have won the Academy Award for Best Lead Actor for his performance in American Sniper. So Bradley Cooper, if he's in it, you can have all my money. I'm going to watch it. This guy is one of my favorites. If Harrison Ford was your dad's favorite movie star, then Tom Hanks is definitely your mom's favorite movie star. Actually, I think he's America's favorite movie star. There is nothing this guy can't do. He's been in 29 movies that have done over $100 million at the box office. He's Sheriff Woody. He's Robert Langdon. He's Geppetto. He's Forrest Gump. There's nothing he can't do. And yet, my two favorite Tom Tom Hanks movies, Catch Me If You Can, and Charlie Wilson's War. Both are criminally underrated, and thank you, Tom Hanks, for all the great work over the years. We love you. I mean, he's Iron Man. He made so much money from doing that role, it's like art imitating life. And now that he's stepping away from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm really interested to see what he does next because him as the villain in U.S. Marshals was really cool. Him in Tropic Thunder was nothing short of iconic and low-key. I think that might be the third best supporting actor performance in the history of movies, right behind Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter and Heath Ledger's The Joker. It's Samuel L. Jackson, motherfuckers, the third highest grossing actor at the box office of all time, but number one when it comes to revenue. I first fell in love with him in high school with the movie Coach Carter. That is one of my favorite sports movies of all time. And then I fell in love with him again in college with the movie Snakes on a Plane. Yup, there's motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. There is no better movie to watch when you come home a little tipsy than Snakes on a Plane.